Hey, everybody. Give me just a sec. I'm going to make sure we're live. Um, if you are popping on and you can see me here, just say, hey, where you're watching from. All right, perfect. So I have got the video up. I know I'm live. Um, I am Stacy with New Creations by Stacy. I'm the owner and artist. And I'm actually an elite retailer here at the Rustic Willow in Ardmore, Alabama. And then I still have my location here in Madison as well. Um, so tonight, we, we actually painted this piece last week. Um, so we're just going to be adding some finishing touches to it. Uh, but before we get started, um, we should have Dixie Bell on with us as well uh, to help answer any questions. Hey, Gina. Hey, Philippa. Oh, wow, from Australia, good morning. Um, so <clears throat> we should, like I said, have Dixie Bell on. Um, in the description, I do have a link to my Facebook page so you can see final pictures, as well as I do have other videos on there. Um, you can see more of my work. Uh, and then also I do have my affiliate link listed. Um, if you wanted to order any products, you can also find your local retailer if you wanna go in and get your hands on the products and see them in person. Um, and a full product list so you know everything we're gonna be using tonight. Um, hey, Tanya. Hey, Leona. Hey, Dixie Bell. All right, so um, just to kind of catch you guys up here a little bit, um, last week we did part of this with the first coat and then we went ahead and did the second coat on here and this is in the navy and yankee blue the chalk mineral paint um since that live i have actually uh put two coats of satin protectant on here that's why you might have a little bit of a glare because um it gives it a, a really nice shiny sheen um and then i did also go ahead and add a little black wax in the details um just kind of around the edges here um, so now we're going to deck the outside of this out with some gold. Um, <clears throat> I don't know if we'll have time to get to the gilding wax, but uh, we're going to do some ray stenciling with the Moonshine Metallics, the Sea Spray, and the uh, Victorian Damask Stencil, the new one. And then we're also going to, we're actually going to start off with the transfer. Um, and we're going to be using the Floral Romance Transfer here. Um, and if you have not used, um, oh, thank you. If you have not used the transfers before, um, they come in either four or six sheets. Let me just kind of show you. Um, it comes with a little wood stick here to apply the transfer. And then I've already got one of the sheets cut up down here. I'm going to bring you guys in once we get to that part. Um, I'm actually starting with the transfer tonight too because I'm working outside and it's gotten a little chilly and I haven't dug my heater out yet. Um, so sometimes there's some issues with applications. If it takes a little longer, I just want to be able to manage my time a little bit better. Um, sometimes when it's really cold, they don't stick as well. Um, they like it to be about room temperature, um, <clears throat> not too humid. Uh, but he does help the glue release. But they come in large sheets like this. And we're actually going to be piecing two of the sheets together um, because it makes one large design. They're all numbered. I don't know if you can see up here, but they're numbered with a one, two, three, four as far as how they work together. Um, so I've already cut the piece just because we're going around some curved edges. And if it doesn't take too long to apply, I will go ahead and show you um, kind of how I measure and cut, which is really not measuring, but um, anyway. So comes with this. It also comes with, oh, whoops. Well, it only works if you have the end on. <laughs> it doesn't go back in without it. Um, I'll deal with that in a little bit. But uh, it also comes with some tips and tricks on how to apply the transfer. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and start there. If you guys have any questions, I'll try to watch them. But like I said, if I should happen to miss anything, and right now I can't see comments, but there we go. Um, oh, thanks, Dixie Bell. So <clears throat> let me go ahead and bring you guys in because I want you to be able to kind of be straight down so you can really see what's going on. Um, let's see 
here. And let me go ahead and just raise this up. Maybe. Okay, perfect. There we go. Sorry. Don't look at my garage here. It's terrible. Um, I have got so much stuff. And for some reason, I can't seem to manipulate my tripod, which I had it set so it was really easy. <laughs> but clearly, that didn't work out. I used the wrong clips here. There we go. Sorry about that. Hopefully that view wasn't too horrible. <laughs> um, all right, so let me straighten you guys up and get you down so you can see pretty well. Um, you won't see me through much of this video because we're also gonna be doing the raised stenciling. So this is a drawer from inside the cabinet doors. Um, you can see the difference in the sheen from earlier versus this. You want to put your transfer directly onto your paint. Um, the paint is very porous, so it's going to stick better. You can put it over like a clear coat protectant, but it just takes a little more work. It doesn't quite stick as well um, when you're going over a clear coat. And I've got all these little white dusties floating around. You want to make sure all these little particles are off your piece, you want it going straight onto the paint. If you do do a little sand with a fine grit sandpaper, you wanna use a tack cloth just to make sure all of that sand is, or all of that little dust is off. And the reason being is you want this to stick directly on the paint. Any areas where you have some lint or something like that, uh, there's an issue potentially with the transfer not sticking and bubbling. Um, so that's just something to be aware of. You want to make sure you have a nice clean surface to start. So again, this is the floral rose transfer. We're going to be using this on this side. And because of the size of the drawers, um, we are going to piece these two together. So if you noticed, hopefully I don't take too long with this part. But if you notice, and if you're familiar with transfers, you sometimes have a little halo. And hopefully I can hold this up so you can see it. Look right there along the edges. There's just, I mean, it's probably an eighth of an inch. But when you're laying transfers and grouping them together, if you don't cut that off, it's going to be more invisible. So I always cut right down to the edge of my transfer. Um, so I just wanted to point that out first. And I'm going to start off. So if you have a smaller piece, it's easier to lay out. Um, and since we're piecing them together, I'm going to start with my larger piece here uh, because this will be the most difficult one to get on well. But the nice thing about the Dixie Bell transfers are that, and by the way, there's a, two sheets here. I'm just trying to get them apart. So when you cut the transfer, it does make it a little bit easier, or I mean more difficult, to get this to get these two pieces apart. And you don't wanna to touch anywhere where the transfer is because it will stick to your fingers and it will damage it, which there's fixes for everything. You wanna make sure it doesn't stick to itself as well. Just pull this little white sheet away. Okay, but the nice thing about the Dixie Bell transfers, what I was saying is you can lay them and they don't cling right away so you have the opportunity to pull them back if you don't get them laid just right and relay them so you just want to be careful so you're not touching it i'm going to go ahead and line it up on this edge so i did cut it a little off and i know that i did so i'm lining it up along the bottom but i'll have a little Okay, so I'm lightly tapping this down because I don't want it to stick. If this isn't laid right, I want to be able to come back and manipulate it a little bit. So I'm just going to lay it flat here. And I know I'm a little over up here. I'm fine with that. I can just kind of bend it over. But I want to be straight on the bottom. And I'm not quite. So you see how I was able to just pull that back? A lot of transfers will immediately cling and you have to lay them just right the first time. 
these you have a little work room. You wanna make sure you have it well too before you push it down because you don't want any bubbles. Once you start, whoops, and I had it just where I wanted it and then I moved it. So, I'm a little over down here, but that's, that's perfect. I'm liking how this is laying. So now I'm ready to commit to this position. Um, oh, hey, Marianne. I'm ready to commit to this position. So I'm going to start over on this side. Well, I said that and I'm a little, there we go. So I'm going to start over on this side and I'm going to press it down more firmly. And I'm going to go in one direction as I press it down just with my hand because I want to make sure that I have no bubbles and then it's laid out flat. If you get bubbles, there's a fix for that too. Um, hopefully I won't have any, but if you do get bubbles, you just poke them with a little pin, let the air out of them and burnish them down again. And we'll get to that point, but I've got it all laid down now. So I'm gonna use my transfer tool and I'm just going to go over it. So little trick. Because I cut them, I'm close to the edge, and I don't want to take this <clears throat> and go off the edge and mess up my paint. So you can take like the little plastic piece um, that comes off. You'll see it when it comes off of here. You can take one of those, and you can just lay it over and just start rubbing it in along that line. So I normally just go over the whole transfer and that's good enough for that area. And just make sure I hit all the spots. I just wanna rub it down. And by the way, their Dixie Bell transfers are from two different manufacturers. This is one of the original fifth, I think it was 15. Uh, don't quote me on that, but um, this is one of the originals. So typically you don't need to apply heat to this one or anything in order to get it to stick. So we're just gonna make sure that it's on here well. I'm gonna just use the side of my stick to get this edge. You can paint over the transfers too if you end up um, with the accidentally damaging it. Um, you can just kind of paint that section in, like if I would have touched it with my nail or with my finger when I was laying it. Um, and I've actually lost the live here. Let me see if I can pick it back up for the comments. <clears throat> well, I see that I'm still live, so I'm not gonna worry about it too much. Here we go. All right. <clears throat> so, We've got this laid down, so now I'm gonna start pulling it back, but I already know it's not, it's not gonna be attached well enough to pull back. But because I'm running all the way to the edge, I need to kind of find the best area to be able to start it. And that's gonna be the trickiest part here. Um, let me go ahead and do this. So this had a slight overlap. So the way I'm gonna get it started is I'm gonna push that overlap in and attach it to the top of the drawer so that I can get a little edge. See there? So I've got that little edge coming off. So I'm gonna start pulling away my clear plastic overlay. And as I do that, I am going to rub this on. Oh, I'm kind of happy. I was a little bit worried about this transfer because so some transfers are more opaque than others. I'm gonna get my little plastic piece again because um, I'm working on this edge area. Some transfers are more opaque than others. Um, like the vintage floral, it's a little harder to rub with this. Uh, let's see if I can just get this whole edge off right quick. If I can release that whole edge, then I can get rid of this over plastic. Hold on just a sec here. What I'm doing is I'm just rubbing and pulling back at each section. So you wouldn't need to do this if you did not cut the transfer or you know have this um, 
where you're running right up to the edge. Perfect, there we go. So I've got that laid. So now I'm just gonna go ahead, I'm actually gonna hold these with my knees here. Just gonna go ahead and pull this plastic back. And as I'm pulling it back, I'm just watching to make sure that I don't have any parts of the transfer that are still sticking to the clear piece. Um, but back to what I was saying a second ago, sorry. Uh, you do want to, some, some transfers are a little bit more opaque than others. So your paint, whatever color paint you use on the background is gonna show through a little bit. Um, and this is actually a little bit more of a transparent, a little bit, it's not transparent, but uh, this is a little bit more of a transparent one. So you'll see like the white flowers darkening up some from that in the navy behind it. So again, we're just, hey, Jerry. All right. So we're just rubbing as we're pulling up. And actually, this is fantastic. We're at 55 degrees now. We were at 72 today when I decided to do this outside. And I um, was a little bit worried. I had my heat gun out because that's kind of the trick. If it's too cold when you're trying to apply it, um, you can put heat on it to get that glue to release um, and help it stick a little bit better. Sometimes you'll even have issues with painter's tape sticking if it's too cold. So we're almost got this piece off here. And the, the nice thing about the Floral Romance Transfer too, particularly is these are large sections of flowers. So there's lot, not a lot of, um, I guess, outer edges. The outer edges is where you need to be most careful when you're pulling back the plastic. Uh, but when you have these larger images that um, have large solid spaces, they're typically easier to get off here. And you always want to go in one direction um, when you're rubbing this down too, just to avoid any bubbles. Now I do, when I come to the end, I do typically kind of meet in a larger section. So I'm going to start doing that now. And the reason that I meet kind of in the middle is if you're meeting on an edge, especially when it's that outer edge, if that's the last connecting point and it jerks off, it, I'm gonna turn the drawer around here. But you can see the difference on camera here where it's released. And then over here where I've still gotta um, do this. Hopefully you can still see here. Well, actually I might need to keep it this way just so you can kind of see. So all I'm doing, I'm gonna leave this attached because this is the center of my flower. There's no outer edges there. And I'll be least likely to damage the transfer there. And that's just a personal preference with me. Um, I, I think because I accidentally damaged one doing that. So now I always try to come around and meet in the middle. Well, not in the middle necessarily, but I try to always take it off where I don't have that outer edge. And you can see here where my cut was a little bit off. I have a little bit, let me move it back. I have a little bit, the transfer doesn't quite go far enough. I've got a little bit of the paint showing. I'm not worried about that because I'm gonna go around the outer edges with this. Um, With, with gold. And there's a couple things just to give you an idea. Um, you really don't want to mix your transfer with oil. Um, and I am gonna be using gold gilding wax on here. So you wanna create a really good barrier in between your transfer and anything oil that you're using um, or gator hide. Um, gator hide does, can cause the transfers over time to peel 
if you put the gator hide directly on top of here. So you wanna use water-based products to protect it. You can use the clear coats or um, you can use the besting wax because the besting wax is water-based as well. So we are almost off here. And I'm just rubbing while I'm pulling it up. And I'm putting quite a bit more pressure on it for this last section. There we go. So we've got it on here. So before we go ahead and place this next section over here, I want to burnish this down. So let me hold it up. You'll be able to see this halo a little bit, what I was talking about, hopefully. See that little, and the Dixie Bell transfers are great. They have the, I mean, definitely the most minimal halo that I've seen, but you can kind of see that around here. As we burnish this, we want to make sure that every part of that is secure. So a lot of different ways you can do it. You can take your finger and do it. You can use that little plastic you can use this plastic piece and go over it. I prefer the finishing pads. They are from Dixie Bell as well. Um, but you're just going to go on here. And I'm going to burnish my edges really good. At first, you don't want to apply too much pressure because you don't want to peel back. If you do have anything that's sticking up, you don't want to peel it back. So... As you go though, and I'm gonna do my edges a little bit better because some of them overlapped onto the top here. So I'm gonna scrub that a little bit harder. You can distress the transfers as well. So you just wanna go through if you have any, if you have any raised areas, you wanna make sure that those are sticking well. Um, I don't see that I have any bubbles, but if I did, you could, and I'm using more pressure now because I've got it pretty well burnished. I just want to make sure that everything is good on here. So that's it. Um, I don't have any bubbles, but if I did, like I said, I could just take a pin, prick it. thought I might have one there, but that's just a bump. Um, Take a pin, prick it, and let the air out of it. Kind of push it back down. All right, Dixie Bell said, make sure to sprinkle this video. That's so true. <laughs> I have such a, I don't know why I always call it sprinkle. <laughs> All right, so here we go. So right now I'm just laying this to see how it lines up. I think I might not have cut the whole thing off. I should have put my readers on. I think I might have a little edge here. Um, but that's, I mean, it's okay if I do. It's not the end of the world. If my line, because you're going to be able to see the line. Once you put everything together, though, it's not very visible. But if my line is too visible, or what I perceive to be too visible, then I will... Um, Go back in and sometimes I just put a couple streaks of paint over it. I'm actually thinking about lining these flowers out with some gold. So um, some gold mousse, which is water-based. If I do that, I'll probably use the mousse on the edge as well. But um, so that's another way that that will cover this. So I want to line it up. Hopefully you can see here. And this is my, my priority is lining it up with the other side of this transfer. If I overlap anywhere else, I don't really care. I just want this line to be just right. So I'm gonna line this flower up first. And I've got that down. So I'm peeling my finger off very slowly because I had it on the edge and a little tiny, tiny piece, you can't even see it on here, but did come off. So you definitely don't want to 
have that too much of your finger there to, or you don't want to touch it too much because then that is an issue. All right, perfect. So I've got it lined up. And now I'm going to go ahead, go in one direction. You don't want to go like this towards the center because you'll create an air bubble there. Um, but we're just going to press this down, make sure it sticks. I do have an X-Acto knife here. If I'm too over with my measurement, I can go along and cut. I do have a little lip over here, but I'm just going to bend it over and I'll use that just like I used it to get this up earlier. So... You know, and I need to hurry up or else we're going to run out of time. Um, we might just do one raised stencil, but that'll be enough. You'll be able to see the process. So again, I'm going to use my little, a little plastic piece here. So this is the line. Oh, this one has dust all over it. This is my line between my transfer and this still has the clear plastic on it. So I don't want to rub this over my transfer. So I'm just going to put this plastic down, make sure that this line is sealed up really nicely. Like I said, that's it, to me for what I'm doing. That's the most important thing. So we can take that off now and just go ahead and get the rest pressed down. I'm going to try to maybe not talk as much here so we can get it done and get on to the re-stencil. Let's see here. And this is that edge. I'm just bending it over and sticking it to the side here. And I've got a section that popped off. I can see where it released. I'm using my fingernail, and I bet with my arms here, you're not able to really, really see. But I was using my fingernail to hold it in place on the side. I don't really care if it sticks to the side. I just need to create a break in it so that it doesn't ruin my transfer that is sticking to the top of the drawer. So that's why I'm using the side here and just pressing it down on the edge. So now I've got this all released. You can see where it released over on the side. Now we're gonna start pulling back. And like I said, I'm gonna do this one more quickly just because we want to do some raised stenciling. I think I'm gonna go with gold stripes on this piece on the top drawer and then let's see just just want to get this edge released where i've cut it there we go want to be able to pull up from this bottom. Here we go. And it's releasing really nicely over here. Hopefully you can see. I'm really just trying to hurry but not mess anything up at the same time. <laughs> Like I said, if you have any issues, because sometimes, especially if you're going over a clear coat, it does not release as easily. Um, just put a heat gun on it and that'll help that glue let go from this clear plastic. Sometimes you can also grab a little, a little bubble and you can pull it back that way and get it to release if you could see what was happening there. I don't wanna do that too much. You can get a much larger section than that. 
I don't want to do that too much because I want to come back and meet in the middle here. And we are just about there. I did want to go ahead and protect this with you guys too, but um, I don't think we're going to get to that if we do the raised stencil. So I've got some other videos on protecting on my page. Um, if that's something you do want to see. Uh, so we're coming to the middle here. We've almost got this off. And there we are. So that's it. I'm gonna go ahead and burnish this really quickly and then we will do the raised stencil if I can find, there we go. All right. So I just wanna make sure that's stuck down really nicely. Mainly wanna get along the edges, especially where I, um, Folded them over. Just make sure it's all burnished down, no issues. You also, another reason you wanna burnish is because transfers don't like moisture. So when you start to protect this, if you have an area where that moisture can get underneath the transfer, that will make it start to peel as well. So at this point, I've done that initial rub down and I'm just going through here. Um, and making sure that it is all stuck down. So this is the drawer. Let me turn it around so you can really see. So I'll be piecing this together. So these will be the inside drawers. Um, so let me go ahead and set this aside and set up really quickly so we can do the raised stencil. Yep, that's me. Hey, Wanda. <laughs> oh, thanks for sharing or sprinkling. That's what I call it too. <laughs> Hey, Pam. All right, so I just need to grab a couple of the drawers. I'm running, well, hold on, let me, actually I need to move the camera back. Okay, so here's one drawer. Thankfully, I've already measured this one out, so I know where the center is. I'm getting a second drawer just to support the rest of the transfer. So there's a, there is a lot of a glare on these drawers. Um, so hopefully, lots of little white uh, flaky things. I don't know what's going on today. But anyway, so hopefully you can see this well enough, even with the glare, it is pretty bright. But this is the Victorian Damask stencil. It's the new one, which I love Damask anything. Um, I'm so excited. I'm getting ready. Next week's projects, we're actually going to be using the decoupage paper that's the Damask. So by the way, I filled in these holes. I wasn't really worried about doing a great job. Um, I did them with Dixie Mud. And the reason being is because when I put this raised stencil on here, it's going to kind of cover that area. And then I'm actually gonna drill a hole here in the center. So this will be like the backdrop for the knobs here. So I'm just gonna go ahead. So my center point is right here. And I'm just gonna make sure that it is straight. I went ahead and taped off these sections because I don't wanna get anything in that area. Actually, I'm gonna lay this in a second. Um, and I'm gonna slow down. We have at least a good 10 minutes and I can go over a little bit. So we are actually going to be using, I'm gonna raise you up so you can see what I'm doing right quick and then I'll drop you back down. We are going to be mixing up um, some Moonshine Metallics Gold Digger and some Sea Spray, which is a texture additive. So we're gonna thicken up um, the Moonshine Metallics so we can get a nice raised stencil um, backdrop for the knobs that I'm putting on here. So with the Moonshine Metallics, you do, oh, that's kind of hard to open. Hey, 
Marianne. I did, um, I did do a blend on it. It's mostly in the navy, and then um, it has a Yankee blue highlight, as well as uh, I did do a black wax on these as well. So I have painted out of these containers, so they're kind of a mess. Um, but this is the gold in the Moonshine Metallics. So all of the goodies um, for the metallics, uh, they sink to the bottom, all the metallics do. So anytime you open this, the mousse, um, especially the gold mousse, you wanna stir it up really, really well, bring all of that shine and shimmer to the top because before it was just kind of a sandy color. Um, but this is what, metallics don't always show up so well on camera, but um, now it's, it's looking nice and shimmery. The only thing is when you mix a metallic um, with the sea spray, which I find it happens less with the sea spray, so that's why this is my choice for what we're doing. Um, you can also use Dixie Mud which I do like for raised stenciling, but the Dixie, Moonshine Metallics are thin and the Dixie Mud is a little bit thinner. So when you mix them together, it's, um, you don't have control about how much it thickens up and how much, when you dilute the metallics, you get less of a metallic look. So you wanna be careful about how you mix this and watch that while you're mixing. Um, a lot of the metallic will go out with um, Dixie Mud where it won't with the Sea Spray. So we're just gonna go ahead, I'm gonna pour it in. Usually I spoon it in, but um, I can put it in a container later. So I'm just gonna pour some of this in here. It's probably way more than I'll need, but I will end up um, saving it. It does thicken up when you use Sea Spray a lot, uh, if you save it. Um, so give me just a sec here. Uh, just wanted to put that somewhere where it wasn't gonna be all over the floor. I don't know why, because I have so much paint all over my floor that I don't know that it makes a huge difference. <laughs> um, so I would say, I don't know, I maybe have an ounce of paint in here. Um, so if you wanna measure, you can. You can put it on the scale. Um, and the sea spray, this is sea spray. It's a texture additive. You can see it looks just like a little powder here. It is two scoops. And I'll show you what a scoopy looks like. You see it's real powdery. But two scoops of this will thicken up eight ounces of paint. So I am probably, I don't really measure probably gonna use about a third of this thing because I want the Moonshine Metallics pretty thick. I can always add more paint or more thickener. So, like I said, I probably added maybe about a third of a scoop. Um, so it'd be like half a scoop or I guess what, two ounces of paint. Um, so you see how it looks in here? You're just gonna stir it up really, really well. Um, you want to make sure that all the white clumps are out of here. Uh, so technically, it should mix up to be something like brownie batter when you're mixing it with paint. It does mix a little bit differently because the Moonshine and Metallics are thinner. So it takes a little bit more, um, which is why I used about a third of the paint. But again, you want to stir it up really well because you don't want little white specks in your raised stencil. Uh, coming out and I definitely so you can see about how thick that is that is still way too thin for what I want so I'm actually but if I'm saving this I don't want to add any more thickener because then I'll have to thin it out a lot with water because it's going to thicken up more the longer it sits even in a closed container um, it's just the way this stuff works so I'm going to take out a little bit of this and I'm going to add a little bit more of the sea spray. And I actually probably want it, I don't know if I'll add, yeah, let's go ahead and dump that in. I added about another third. 
because I want this pretty thick, but I want to make sure I don't lose my metallic. And this is pretty much how I mix everything. It's how I mix my paint colors. I do not measure anything. I do have to measure to cook though because I'm kind of bad at it, but uh, yeah, this is nice and pasty, which is what I'm looking for. I Like I said, it should be the thickness of brownie batter if you mix it up by the directions. Um, I go by how thick I want it. You can see it's still a little bit clumpy, but it's nice and pasty. So you can see it's not running. That's exactly what I want. Just wanna make sure that I have all the clumps out. Now I could add a little more paint to this, but I'm not going to. We don't have a lot of time. I'm just gonna do one of these. You want it to look just like, I want this to look like nice whipped butter is really what I'm going for. Um, for how I want it to be mixed. And you can play around with it, you know. If this is your first time doing it, do it on a piece of wood or something like that just to get the drift. So I still have the metallic in here. It is a little bit toned down. Um, if it's too toned down when I'm done, I just stick the stencil right back over and just rub on the gilding wax or whatever I decide to use. So you can kind of see how it looks now kind of like whipped butter or something like that. Um, so now, well, I've got to, I've got to finish placing this, but um, this is a little piece that comes with the, um, oh, the stencils. Oh gosh, I'm drawing a blank all of a sudden. Um, silk screen stencils. This little thing comes with the silk screen stencils and I love it for um, doing a raised stencil. You can also use like the uh, little spatula or something like that. Dixie Bell carries those as well. But um, I just use these from these silk screen stencils. Hey, Elizabeth. Um, so let me go ahead and finish centering this. We've got a few minutes left. So what I'm doing is, like I said, I had my center point marked already. I'm just kind of eyeballing that, but I also know that my outline of my little keyholes goes right here, and I want to make sure that I'm straight across. So this is <laughs> this is how I measure, I hate to say. Um, so this little thing right here, this is not straight at all. Um, let's see. What I'm doing is I'm lining up this with the matching piece over here. So now let me just make sure I'm still centered. Yep. And now I'm straight because this little piece is at the edge and that little piece is at the edge. So I've got my tape here and I actually want to tape this down a little bit more because you don't really want this to move. Um, this isn't going to be perfectly clean, but... I want it to be as clean as possible. I've got more of these little white flecks that keep coming from I don't know where. Um, I'm not worried about them as long as they're not in here. They'll brush off otherwise. So I just want to make sure that I'm still lined up. And I am perfectly. Okay, so now what we're going to do is I'm going to take a little bit. Oh, sorry. I don't have you guys to where you can see. Sorry about that. All I did was tape it down though. That was all you really missed. Um, so taped it down, straightened it up, just to reiterate how I was making sure it was straight. These two are the same, they're repeating patterns and they're falling in the same place on the edge of the drawer. And I did have the middle line marked right here. So that's how I was able to center it. Now all I did was add this tape this tape here, I actually have down so that I don't go over into the other design when I'm doing my raised stencil. So now I'm just gonna go ahead and take some, take some of this off. This is my thickened moonshine metallic. And I'm just going to rub it over the top. 
might have actually wanted it a little bit thicker, but we've got this. This is what we're going with. So you can also use like a spray adhesive to keep the stencil down. I rarely use the spray adhesives. I just simply don't like cleaning them off. Um, that glued spray on the other side, I just don't care for that. Um, so I'm just putting a little bit more on here and I'm just pulling it across the stencil. Most of the time, this is the first time I've actually used this with the sea spray. Most of the time I use this tool with the, um, with the Dixie mud, but normally I apply this with the stencil brush and had I mixed it up thicker, we're going to see how this comes off. Um, hopefully it's going to be relatively it doesn't have to be perfectly clean, but hopefully I don't have too many smears. I feel like I might have a few based on the thickness of what I've got mixed here, but I think it's gonna be fine. So now I'm just gonna take the whole edge and go over this. It's not going to be perfectly smooth and I've got a little bit that ran over, but that's fine because I've protected this so I can wipe that off. Um, so that's it. I'm going to just set that back in here. And then when I pull this off, I'm going to try to go straight up for the most part. And there it is. So once that dries, I'll knock off all this little white flecks that have fallen around it. Um, let me set this somewhere where I don't get gold all over everything. And I'm going to actually take a baby wipe here. So my piece is protected. Um, and you don't have to protect over the moonshine metallics. So I've just got that gold that came off. Um, and it's going to wipe right off because I've got it protected but it'll dry and stick just fine. No issues as far as that's concerned. So that is it. Um, let me go ahead and pop you guys back up. I did want to go ahead and do it on the cabinet doors as well, but um, oh my gosh, and I now I see the background, your view of all my furniture back there. But anyway, <laughs> um, so thank you guys so much for hanging out tonight. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Elizabeth. Um, like I said, you can see last week we painted this. So if you want to see that, I do have it shared on my page as well as it is on the Chalk 101 page from last week. Um, please share this video if you know of anyone who could use it. And again, um, just like and follow me on Facebook. Thanks again. Thank you, Dixie Bell, for everything. Oh, thank you. And you guys take care. Have a great night. Bye.